Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brun from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation. Now, in today's video, we're going to be going through the entire Organization 13 event that just came out today uh, and discussing on how to beat everything. Now, normally, and I spent today in today's stream, in case you happen to have not uh, seen it, uh, but I streamed on Twitch me basically going through and finding setups for every single stage of, well, the Organization 13 event, okay? Now, normally, I would go ahead in a video like this, I would uh, actually go stage by stage by stage and tell you the specific ways on how to beat each of them. However, and I'll still do that a little bit to some degree. However, uh, due to a few reasons, I'm not going to be doing that. And instead, I'm going to be telling you more on how to beat all of them as a whole. Because, and I'll list a few reasons. Uh, the first of them being that, as it is right now, because of the lack of the permanent banners that we used to have, such as the Beginner's Deal and the Top Drawer Deal, which used to guarantee uh, certain medals like uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, no not 2, Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Kyrie, for example. Uh, let's pull her up. This one right here. Okay. Because of the fact you can't really guarantee that you're going to get this medal anymore, um, let alone any of the key art copy medals that used to be guaranteed as well, or any of the copy medals for that matter, it's kind of hard to guarantee what people are going to have. The closest I'm going to have to that is any of the Kingdom Hearts 3 medals because of the fact that like they're just always being offered for the past, what, like month or two uh, from the Kingdom Hearts 3 banners, as well as any other... Uh, as well as maybe like dual wield roxas okay well, those would be like the only metals i could like guarantee uh, however the other reason why i'm not gonna go strictly stage by stage like i normally do would be because of the fact i kind of noticed a trend for all of the stages in general and realistically you can actually kind of beat all of them using more or less the same strategy to be honest uh the only difference between the stages would be whether or not how strong are your damage medals, essentially. Uh, and on that end, there's not really too much <laughs> you can do about that except get better medals or get better traits for your medals. Um, on top of the fact that, at least on that end, you can at least figure out how to beat it using what you have while using my while using the strategies that I, I provide to you. So I, I figured that will end up being the best way to go about it. So without further ado, let's kind of dive into a little bit. Go explain things uh, first of all. So, like I mentioned on earlier, I did a stream earlier today, and I, I literally made like <laughs> I made like t I think it's a little too bright for you to see it, but I made tons of notes uh, for each of the stages, figuring out how to beat them and stuff. And yeah, they're they're all pretty much more or less the, exactly the same in terms of how to beat them and what type of strategy slash setup to use. Okay, so. Uh, we'll kind of go into a brief overview. Now, the medals that you are going to definitely want to use uh, for pretty much the strategy, this is basically one strategy, one setup strategy, is you're going to need a medal with overwrite that you can use for this event. Okay, that will be going in slot one. Uh, you definitely need second chance for sure. Uh, you need good buffer medals because a good portion of the enemies in this event do heavily debuff your strength. So if you don't have a way to automatically uh, get your strength back up, hence the reason why we are using overwrite, so we don't have to worry about that as much. Uh, but also because of the fact that the only overwrite medals that we have in the game at the moment, aside from Zeus, are going to mostly only provide up to seven tiers of buffs and debuffs, so you're going to need a second buffer medal to help kind of bring it up to 15 tiers. Um, the third type of thing, metal, that you might want to use as well are turtle medals, such as Kingdom Hearts 3 Ayenzo or Mini that you get from the VIP deal. You could use some other buffer medals as well, although you'll be sacrificing some of the attack power you might have by having extra turtle medals in your setup, so that would kind of just depend on you. Um, although for the most part, you can almost pretty much, if you have Team Hearts 3 Yenzu, that should be just fine. Uh, I've had multiple quests as well, where you could even just do fine with just having 
a super weak total metal in your setup, such as Megara or Hercules or Phil. Like very easily, just casting that twice, maybe even once for a few of them, is enough to turtle through them as well. So I'm ranting a little bit. Let's let's go go on real quick. Um, I kind of described her a little bit, and I'll, I'll show you my setup to kind of make sure this gets across correctly. So, like I mentioned before, you will want an overwrite metal. Now, I prefer to use a like a Kyra EX Plus or a Shion EX Plus if you have one, um, and I would recommend having a second chance on it if possible. Okay, this is not exactly a setup. Uh, I was this is a setup I was using for my stream. But I had... So this is more of the setup I was actually using to pretty much complete almost all of the quests. You can quite literally complete every single event quest except Xemnas uh, for this organ event using pretty much a setup like this, okay? First metal being an overwrite metal, preferably Shion EX Plus or Kairi EX Plus. There are other overwrite metals in the game, which I will kind of show you right now, that you can use. Uh, let's see, tier 8. They're all pretty much going to be tier 8. There's only like, off the top of my head, there's only one tier, there's only one metal in the game that's not tier 8 that has overwrite. And that is going to be uh, the Kingdom Hearts 3 Zeus. This is pretty much going to be the only overwrite metal off the top of my head that you can use <laughs> that brings you up to 15 tiers almost automatically uh the only issue is though uh, that you probably wouldn't want second chance on this metal because it is a good damage metal you're gonna want an attack skill on this so even though this is the only exception probably not gonna want to use it anyways because you you want to have a good skill on it that's not a good attack skill on it so for the most part we're gonna focus on the tier 8 overwrite medals but there are other tier 8 overwrite medals uh, a lot of them are from last year's anniversary event so for example we have the stained glass ex plus medals uh, any of these can work just make sure you have the appropriate attributes for your setup so you have if you have if you're using Fairy Stars, for example, you have all three PSM attributes maxed out for buffs and debuffs. Uh, Stained Glass number 8 EX Plus for, uh, only provides magic. Buffs and debuffs doesn't provide any power or speed, so keep that in mind when making your setup. Okay, And that's kind of the whole reason why I prefer Shion and Kairi EX Plus, just because of the fact they actually provide that PSM. Uh, buff and debuff at seven tiers all together and it's not just a single one however on the flip side another benefit that the stained glass ex plus medals have over Kyrie and shion ex plus is that they these medals actually provide both reverse and upright buffs and debuffs at seven tiers which could be useful again just kind of depends on what type of metals and buffer metals you have at the moment Okay, some other overwrite medals you could take advantage of, uh, if we can find them real quick, are going to be the Foreteller EX Plus medals that we got from last year as well, such as Ased, there's also Ava, Envy, and Gula. Uh, I feel like I'm missing one. Whatever. The Foreteller EX Plus medal. <laughs> Uh, but you can use these medals as well just for the same exact purpose. Uh, whatever works for you, okay? As long as you have an overwrite medal in slot 1, you're Gucci, okay? Slot 2 needs to be a medal that can buff and debuff pretty much the majority of the rest of your buffs and debuffs that you might need. Uh, so in this case, I'm using Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie. If you don't have Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, do not worry. You can still figure it out. You might struggle a little bit more because you're going to be sacrificing some of your damage slots potentially. But you can still get around it, okay? So, uh, an easy pick... For many of you, if I can find it, uh, let's go to EA. Okay, it's going to be a lot of actually be the uh, what should we call it? The free to play medals that they gave out within these last couple months or so. So medals like the uh, Sora and Chip and Dale, you can use this because it provides the rest of the general strength buffs as well as general defense debuffs that you need on top of the overwrite medal. To max out your your general strength and debuffs and de and defense debuffs at the very least, those are the most important. So you could use this if needed. On top of the fact, it does provide uh, a little bit of upright buffs as well and attribute buffs and debuffs. So 
not a bad thing, as well as the other free-to-play metal, Sora and Peter Pan. Literally the exact same thing, it's just a power version. Uh, so if you have any of these two, you don't have something as strong as a Kingdom Hearts 3 Kaya, for example, you could use those instead. Just keep in mind though, you're not going to have the full amount of upright buffs or upright debuffs unless you happen to have special uh, extra attack, for example, to, for the upright buffs. Um, but you're definitely not going to have the full amount of upright debuffs uh, just between your overwrite metal and your free-to-play metal. Okay, that's, just keep that in mind. Um, your third metal, okay, now from this point onwards, it kind of just depends on how strong your damage metals are. Uh, but if you do ha happen to be struggling up until, I would say... Maybe Zigbar, so the second to last quest. Um, if you happen to be struggling up to that point, you can you can use a turtle metal such as Yenzo, Kingdom Hearts 3 Yenzo, or Kingdom Hearts 3 Mini for that matter as well. Let's go ahead and sort it by defense. Kingdom Hearts 3 Mini. Either of these two will work. A good majority of the quests that can be turtled and spoiler alert most of them can be turtled um for pretty much most of their attacks so it's a good sign you are trying to beat it in three turns though so you want you do want to make sure you have good damage medals too okay but if you do need the turtle do not worry most of the quests don't need max turtling at all whatsoever there's a few that do but most of them don't um, you can get away with a simple turtle metal such as Kingdom Hearts 3 Megara, for example. Um, I literally had multiple quests, even some of the later quests uh, in the event, that I literally just only used my Kingdom Hearts 3 Megara, and I was able to turtle it just fine. Um, so, that's worth noting. If you happen to be lacking, like, meta turtle metals or whatever. Uh, so as long, so that's that's what you want to have possibly in slot three. After slot three, just pure damage medals from that point onwards. Use your strongest damage medals, uh, if possible. Maybe have at least one or two medals whose supernovas provide that 250% guilt buff for damage. You don't have to, but it'll be recommended to have at least one if possible. Um, especially once you get to Zigbar, Zigbar is definitely going to need that. And if needed, I can even go through each of the quests real quick for specific accounts. Um, but more or less, this is going to be the type of strategy and setup that, you're gonna, that you can literally run on almost every single quest. Except Xemnas, the very last quest. That is the only quest you cannot actually use the specific setup on. Uh, in terms of Xemnas, you would actually take off the turtle metal because Xemnas you cannot turtle. You cannot turtle Xemnas at all whatsoever. Uh, so that would, that would be the only uh, quest in which case you would take off turtling and you would just put a damage mode instead. But otherwise it would stay the same even for Xemnas. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Now, I, I, at, since I've gone through and described the concept and the setup strategy for... Pretty much the entire event i'll go through each stage real quick and give a little bit of like a kind of like spark notes <laughs> on each quest all right so let's jump to that real quick okay so first up we're going to start with lark scenes that's quest number one uh and if you want to jump to certain quests uh within the event i'll hopefully remember to put down timestamps down in the description and comment section down below for you to go ahead and just kind of skip through certain parts of the video if needed but let's we'll start off with Lark Scene. Go, again I'm just going to use this setup. Um, if you're new to the game looking at this part the little description on the top left hand corner will give you a brief rundown as to what it, how exactly the opponent is going to fight so it is going to be useful. Uh, and I'm just picking a damage metal. Okay so in terms of Lark Scene, honestly when fighting Lark Scene, almost everybody should be able to beat Lark Scene, okay? <laughs> the only people who should not be able to beat Lark Scene is literally a new player who, like, you you must have joined, like, just today or, like, this week to not be able to beat Lark Scene, okay? Because she is super weak. Um, I was able to beat her with, like, a tier 5 6-star medal. 
<laughs> like, but that's not even leveled up at all. It's level one. Uh, so you can literally beat her super easily. You, like, you literally have to, like, never pulled from a banner at all yet. Literally be a newcomer. We just started today to not beat Larxene. But some quick notes. The f uh, number five number that's above her head, that's red, okay? If the number is red, that does mean that every time you use a, uh, a metal, so every time you cast a metal or tap to attack, it will reduce that number by one, all right? Blue numbers means that every hit that you do to the enemy reduces that number by one, okay? So you know how some metals uh, do a certain number of hits? So like my, let's see, let's reduce, oh crap. Let's reduce the speed a little bit. So you see how like my lightning over here does four hits. It went by a little fast, but it does four hits. Because it does four hits, if the enemy has but blue counters, it will reduce it by four counters. Okay, because it does four hits. Red counters on the hand, it's just every time you use a metal. It's just, it will reduce it just by one. So that's a quick rundown. Uh, Lark scene can paralyze you. Uh, but honestly... That should be irrelevant because you could, you should be able to kill her in pretty much your first turn. So, oh, let's speed up the speed real quick. Like she just dies immediately. <laughs> even though was, even when I was using super weak metals, she just dies like immediately. So you should have no problem with Lurxine. Okay, so next up is Marluxia. Marluxia is also going to be very easy uh, using the same setup. Remember, the strategy is going to be the same for pretty much almost all of the uh the organization events i mean quests so i'm only using my op medals just because of the fact that i want to get through this quickly but you, if you just replace your my damage medals with whatever your damage medals are you should be fine as well as the same thing with your override and your buffer medals and such as well uh okay all right so again same strategy uh, Marluxia can sleep you, as well as he debuffs your speed defense when he attacks you, okay? Honestly, that's not a big deal. You have Asuna in case you can't kill him on the first turn, uh, because of your pet skill. So, you should be able to kill him at least within the first two turns. Um, truthfully, even with just, like, a six-star metal, you can still kill him fairly easily. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and use, use my metals. Very easy. You can still use the same exact strategy set up against Marluxia. Uh, it's also worth noting as well, I forgot to mention this, but you can turtle both Larxene and Marluxia if that happens to be a thing that you need to do. Alright, so next up we have Luxord. Uh, Luxord is kind of similar to Marluxia. Um, except slightly harder hitting, okay? Luxord can poison you. You can turtle his attacks. However, for Luxord, in order to turtle his attacks, you need your you need to absolutely max out everything turtle related. So you need to max out your defense stats as well as max out the opponent's uh, strength debuff stats, okay? You have to max them out in order to turtle his attacks, especially for his critical hits. Um, and if you don't, Whenever he does a critical hit, you like you're going to die. Okay, uh, it's also worth keeping in mind. I forgot to mention it that for turtling, you do need uh, your your best defense max skill as well. But same strategy can apply here. I'm just gonna go run through it. Aside from what I just mentioned, there's nothing really too fancy about Luxord, and we'll just let it run on autopilot. Easy enough. All right, so next up we are fighting against Demix. Demix is going to be the starting point in which you're going to probably want to start using Overwrite Metals if you have any. Uh, the first three quests, or yeah, first three quests don't really need them as much because they don't debuff you. But starting from Demix, opponents are going to start heavily debuffing you. Uh, not as much for Demix, but later like as you go higher up they will debuff you at greater degree compared to demix so but other than that uh his strategy is about is basically still the same he starts off with plus five speed defense 
um, as well as he can debuff your general strength by five tiers. Okay, again, hence why we kind of want the uh, the overwrite medals if possible. Okay, and he is turtle bolt as well. Uh, you don't need any any. He, he's fairly weak in his attacks, so. You could probably get by with just a Magar or a Phil or Hercules or something as well. But we'll jump into it. Okay. I'm just going to let it run through it. The strategy is pretty much almost exactly the same for, like, all the quests. <laughs> Alright, so next up we have Axel. Okay, so Axel, Axel is going to start off with five attack counters, uh, the red counters, okay. Uh, he will start off with plus seven power defense as well, and he can debuff your power strength by seven tiers. So you'll probably want an overwrite medal. Again, I recommend the, uh, the, the Kyrie or Shion EX plus medals if possible for your overwrite, just because then you don't have to worry about the miscellaneous power speed or magic debuffs enemies might do to you uh but he will debuff your power strength by seven tiers um, and again axel as well is also turtleable okay you can use a simple turtle metal to just get through his attacks if needed uh, if he happens to be killing you but aside from that you're just using the same exact strategy against him Again, your medals don't have to be as... For the damage medals, your damage medals don't need to be as OP as mine. On top of the fact that your buffer medals, such as Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, don't need to be as good as Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie. As long as you have... As long as you can complete all of your buffs and debuffs enough to be able to max out your, uh, your stats as much as possible, you should be fine. Alright, right, so next up is going to be Syax. Now, Syax is going to be very similar to Axel. Uh, however, he is slightly different because, uh, okay, so first of all, he starts with the five attack counters, just like Axel did, uh, the red counters. He also starts off with plus seven power defense, just like Axel did. The only difference between Syax and Axel is the fact that Syax. Every once in a while, or if you bring his counters to zero, or every few turns, he will do a kind of like, he will do his kind of berserk attack where he goes nuts and stuff. That will kill you. You cannot turtle that berserk attack. So, you're going to want to start going more of a damage type of setup, okay? So, if you just take off the uh, the turtle metal, replace it with a damage metal, should be fine, Okay. Uh, and it's also worth noting that up until Syax, you can beat all all quests up to Syax using just six star medals. Once you start getting to Syax, you probably will start needing needing to use seven star medals. Okay, so just throwing that out there. But other than that, the setup is pretty much the same. Overwrite slot one, buffer debuffer medal slot two. You could even put another buffer defer, buffer metal if needed in slot three to help max out those buffs and debuffs and then the rest can be damage metals okay so we'll just go right into it um my damage metals are strong enough so i don't have to worry about uh taking off my enzo and i also completely max out my buffs and debuffs as well so i don't have to worry about throwing on an extra buffer debuffer metal There we go. Again, you, you can't turtle his Berserk attacks in this one, so take off the turtle metal for this quest. Otherwise, the overwrite and the buffer is the same. Alright, next up we have Zexion. Uh, now, Zexion is going to be similar to, similar to Demix, okay? This time he's going to have 20 hit counters, so this is going to be the first time you see the blue counters. So every time you hit him, uh, you will reduce his counters by one. So metals such as, for example, no, not you. I think it's lightning. Yeah. Lightning does four hits, for example, meaning that she will reduce uh, who is it? Zexion's counters by four counters. Okay, so just keep that in mind depending on the metals that you're using. 
Zexion also inflicts random status ailments. Not a big deal because you have at least your pet Asuna uh, for the pet skill as well as whatever Kyrie or Shion Metal if you happen to be using one should be able to get rid of the uh, the status ailments on their own as well assuming they don't get skipped. Um, so if you have Kyrie or Shion EX Plus or the Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie or Shion you should be just fine. Um, it is also worth noting as well that Zexion does buff himself when he attacks by a... Uh... No, that's not what it says. He, well, he's, he, pr he provides plus 7 magic defense, upright defense, and reverse defense to himself. Okay, so just keep that, just throwing that out there as well as he can be turtled as well. You can use simple turtle metals. He doesn't do too much damage, so simple turtle metals... Nagara, Hercules, Phil, and such. Preferably you want Camera 3 Yenzo or Mini or something. He can be turtled if, if needed, if he's doing too much damage to you. But otherwise, it's the same exact type of strategy. Setup. What do you want to call it? Come on, run. I'm just going to let it run. Okay, so next up, we are fighting against Lexius. Now, weirdly enough, Lexius is actually pretty easy to beat because he doesn't have anything you need to worry about, to be honest, okay? Uh, strangely, he can be turtled with super simple turtle metals such as Megara, Phil, and Hercules. So, you <laughs> even his big, uh, big, big dive attack thing, meteorite dive thing that he does, that can easily be turtable still as well. So you, you don't really have to worry about it. If you, like, if you follow this setup, literally this setup works just fine against him as well. Uh, and he doesn't debuff you either. He does start off with uh, plus 10 power, speed, defense. Again, if you have the appropriate... If you have uh, an overwrite metal such as, uh, as Kyrie Shone EX+, Plus, that... That's kind of irrelevant, uh, but we'll just we'll just get started. And I'm just gonna let it run again as, as well. Yeah, see? That right there, that was his big dive attack I was talking about. You were able to turtle it. Just fine. Again, you can still use a basic turtle metal as well to be able to turtle the attack. You don't have to have an Ienzo or a Mini uh, to do so. Alright. Okay, so next up we have Vexen. Uh, this is the point where I've been getting kind of reports about people getting starting to have trouble against Vexen. Uh, and to be honest, you can still use the exact same strategy against Vexen. He's pretty much almost exactly like Zexion and Demix and such. More so Zexion because Vexen will have hit counters as well. Um, but yeah, you can turtle through Vexen. Uh, you can use simple turtle metals just like the others, like, you know, Megara, Hercules, Phil, and such. Uh, simple turtle metals. So his attacks. Both of his attacks, the, the little ice block thing as well as the little ice spike, both of those can be turtled just very easily, so you don't have to worry about that. He does start off with plus 15 tiers of magic and general defense. Um, again, another reason why you want to have overwrite in your setup. Easy way to just strip through that. Um, and he does have 10 hit counters. So having attack metals that can manipulate counters is recommended, uh, although... As far as I remember, most overwrite metals uh, can get around that, as so you don't have to weapon that. As well as most Kyrie or as most buffer metals, the good buffer metals, anyways, uh, can get around the counters as well. So just make sure you have some damage metals that can get around the counters, and you should be fine. 
but we'll just go through it with this setup as well. I'm just gonna let it run on autopilot. There we go. We beat him. It's worth noting, I didn't use any of my supernovas that turn either. So I probably could have killed him very, very possibly in turn one if I used my supernovas. Um, so you don't need as heavy hitting damage medals like I had in order to, to beat him um, in three turns. All right, so next up we are fighting against Zaldin. Now it is worth keeping in mind that Zaldin is the only uh, organization 13 member in this event that is considered a air type enemy instead of a ground type enemy okay um, once you start getting into this area it's possible because he is level 3500 it is possible that you might start not doing enough damage okay now I will tell you right now that there might be a few reasons why you might only be doing one damage for your damage medals. Excuse me. The first reason, and I'll do my setups as well. The first reason is probably because of the fact that you're not uh, maxing out your buff and debuffs, maxing out your stats essentially that you need in order to do the appropriate amount of damage in the first place. The second reason might be uh, that, uh, uh, what is it? that your slot multipliers might not be high enough, okay? If your slot multipliers are not high enough, you are going to need minus 60 traits. So in this case, minus 60 air uh, in order to start doing damage. However, if your uh, slot multipliers are high enough, such as like with my multipliers, for example, you don't need the minus 60 traits uh, at this point the only event i mean the only quest stage that you actually need traits to do damage if you have high enough uh, slot multipliers in the first place is going to be zen this zen this is literally the only quest in this event that you have to have good traits on virtually all your medals <laughs> in order to beat it okay but in terms of zaldin he does have uh, plus 15 tiers of speed defense, and he does give himself plus 7 tiers of speed strength when he attacks, okay? It is worth noting that Zaldin can be turtled with basic turtle medals as well, such as Kingdom Hearts 3, Megara, Hercules, Phil, and such. Um, but other than that, you can pretty much follow the exact same setup as the rest of the quests against Zaldin. So, we'll just go ahead, run the same setup. I'm just going to let it run on autopilot. I'm not sure if I'm going to need my need to use supernovas for this fight. Uh, if I don't, I'll just go back and use them real quick. Actually, I might do so, just in case. So we should for sure be able to kill him this turn. Okay. There we go. We beat him. It is going to be at this point where you are going to start needing some of the better damage medals. It's worth noting. Uh, just because of the sheer amount of HP that he has. 
All right, so next up is Zigbar. Zigbar is honestly probably going to be uh, the most tricky to work around just because of the fact that Zigbar has... <laughs> Zigbar is the start of having revenge counter thresholds uh, for him. Um, and I will put his revenge counters up on the screen. So for Zigbar, he has three revenge counters, okay? Which is worth noting uh, because if he's giving you trouble, it's because of the fact he's going to revenge attack you three times, uh, which is more than your two second chance skills. <laughs> your pet second chance and your metal second chance. Uh, so you need to do it kind of... In a way, if you beat Sephiroth or you fought Sephiroth or you, you know, you watched my video on how to beat Sephiroth uh, for the Sephiroth, for the Hades Cup, the strategy to beating Zigbar is pretty much almost exactly more or less the same as it was for Sephiroth. Uh, you can still use the same type of setup that we've been using for this entire event against Zigbar. However, you want to start saving your supernovas towards the end of the fight once you start approaching his last revenge value. So that way you can just burst him down as fast as possible all in one go uh, so he can't kill you a third time. Okay, so that's that's the kind of key thing right there. So we'll go ahead and we'll use this setup. Okay, so for my first turn, personally for me, I'd like to... Uh, I like to keep at least one guilt boosting medal for our supernova for that last push that I mentioned before. Okay, so I actually have quite a few. I have two of them actually. I have Lightning and Marluxia, so I'm only going to use my Marluxia for right now. I'm going to use my Ki Kingdom Hearts 3 supernova Kyrie uh, in order to overwrite, as well as provide max bus and debuffs, and use my Marluxia in order to do a huge burst of damage as well as provide that guilt boost, okay? And then from here, I'm just gonna keep going. His first revenge counter threshold is at 70% of his health, which is at 699,996.5 HP bars. So make a note of that. You'll notice we'll be coming fairly close. Okay, so we actually just pass it now. That's when he did his first revenge value, okay? When he does his revenge attack, he actually debuffs your power strength and general strength by 15 tiers, okay? That's that's a big deal. So, luckily for me, I did enough damage where I pretty much went through almost my entire setup so I didn't have to worry about that, okay? On his normal attacks, though, he does fully debuff your... General Strength, Reverse Strength, and Upright Strength by 15 tiers, okay? Again, another reason why you want to have Overwrite in your setups, so that way you don't have to worry about that. So we'll just show you real quick. There we go, all right? As you can see right there, we were able to easily turtle it, and we are pretty much heavily debuffed, okay? Again, why we want to have up Overwrite on our setup, okay, in slot one, so. I'm going to save the rest of my uh, my supernovas for that last push that I mentioned. And we're just going to keep go ahead and keep going. Now, his second revenge value is at 40% of his health. Which is at 399,998 uh, HP bars. So, we're just going to keep going until we reach that threshold. It's possible we might... Re oh. That's yeah, It's possible. Okay, so we managed to reach it this turn as well. And he did both his revenge value attack as well as his normal attack against me. Okay, so I'm like super debuffed in strength. Again, why you want to have overwrite in your setup. Uh, now, for here, luckily, I didn't have to die. Uh, however, that was two turns, and we're trying to beat him in three turns. So this is going to be the turn that I want to burst through everything as much as possible. Okay. So now is when I'm probably going to start using my uh, my supernovas. So I'm going to go ahead and fully buff myself first. Then I'm going to use my lightning to do a bunch of damage on top of get my guilt boost. Then I'm going to just spam through my metals. Go ahead and start using my supernovas. No. Nope. 
Hopefully. I might I think I did this slightly incorrectly, to be honest. Okay. So I kinda messed up. <laughs> I completely forget when doing this run. I wanted to save my uh my Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie. A supernova for when for that last push when he does when he debuffs me in the middle of my attack. Um, so you want to be wary for that. If it wasn't for that counterattack, I would have been able to, like, you saw how much damage I was doing. I would have been able to kill him. So that was my mistake. I completely forgot about that. Um, I'm not going to run it again because this video's already taken a little bit too long. But I'm hoping you can trust my word on that. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and kill him off right here. If I didn't make the mistake, I would have beat him in three turns. However, because I made the mistake, I'm beating my four turns instead. Oh. Again, like I mentioned before in the previous stages as well, uh, you don't need any special traits in order to beat up to this point uh, if your slot multipliers are high enough. Okay. Uh, only if your slot multipliers are low or too low would you actually start needing minus 60 traits in order to start dealing damage if you start noticing your damage most are only doing one damage um, this is assuming that you actually have the rest of your buffs and debuffs already maxed out as well okay what yeah. all right so last but not least we have Zemnus. okay now to be honest Zemnus is the only quest i am not able to complete uh and that is strictly because of the fact that you literally have to have like perfect traits on pretty much all of your damage medals in order to beat Zemnis. Zemnis has just way too much HP for you to be able to just do this with normal medals without any basic traits, okay? Um, in order to beat the, and I know this for a fact because I, in my Discord, I saw people using virtually the same exact setups that I was using. However, the only difference between my setups and their setups is the fact that they had minus 60 ground on top of had extra attack on pretty much all of their damage medals. Um, which was the only different difference between them and me, okay? Um, and we were pretty much using almost the exact same medals too. So... Even if you have high slot multipliers, such as mine, for example, uh, as you notice towards like my slot five and six, I'm hitting like the, the times six multiplier spot. That's pretty high. Uh, even if you're reaching that high point, you still have to use minus 60 traits and extra attack in order to do enough damage to kill him. Okay, this you can still use the same exact setup against Zemnis that you've been using almost the entire Organization 13 event quest. However, like I mentioned before, you do need uh, those traits, okay? Now, I mentioned it earlier in the setup as well, but for against Zemnis, you cannot turtle against Zemnis. The way that Zemnis works is that every odd number a uh, turn, he will, he, will, he will automatically kill you regardless of how much turtling you have. So you can't turtle against him. Um, you're able to survive against his uh, other attacks. So every on turns two and four, you can survive against those, but you can't survive against turns one, three, and five. Uh, so essentially, you have you only have five turns to be able to kill him. Okay, which is fortunate for us because the only conditions in order to get the jewels from him is to just beat him without needing to continue. Okay, so you can take as many turns as you want, but realistically, you only have five turns because he kills you anyways, uh, regardless. So you do want to start using damage medals at this point. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, you do need minus 60 traits and extra attack. Unfortunately for me, I don't have that luxury, although I will show you that I can get pretty close to killing him if I did. Uh, that even if I did have minus 60 and extra attack on everything i could kill him i misstated it a little bit but if you do have uh if your if your slot multipliers are high enough it's possible that you might not need minus 60 in order to kill him but you still you do basically need extra attack in order to kill him okay extra attack is pretty much mandatory the minus 60 is 
impossible to work around if your slot multipliers are high enough. <coughs> Alright, so the things to note about Xemnas. Uh, so I mentioned about him not being able to turtle because he kills you anyways on every odd number turn. Uh, he does have a revenge value at 50% of his HP, which I'll put up on the screen as well, uh, which is at... 824,998 HP bars, but aside from that, you can pretty much follow the same as that strategy. Just take out the turtle metal, put in a damage metal or buffer metal or both, uh, but you still need that overwrite and buffer metal within the first two slots at least, okay? Um, he does debuff your strength during his turns, which is why you want to have the overwrite metal. So we'll go ahead and get into it. I'm not going to be able to beat him, but I want to show you that you can, if you have the right metals and the right traits, you can beat him. That's basically if you can do enough damage. Okay. So for here, I'm just going to go ahead and start off with my usual supernova, max everything out, as well as uh, get my guilt boost, and just do a ton of damage. <coughs> So you saw right there, like he just, he, that move right there, he just kills you regardless. There's nothing you can do about that. I'm just going to want to run normally for this turn. Okay, this turn I should survive. Yeah, see. It also helped that my defense boost 6 kicked in, but yeah, you can easily survive that attack. Uh, this time, I'm going to use FFRK Lightning. Okay. That was his revenge attack right there. I just saw. He, deb he debuffed my strength a whole lot. <laughs> Which is why we need the overwrite. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, what is this? Turn three, I think? No, this is turn four. Turn four. Go ahead and use this. This turn as well, I'll just go ahead and use the rest of my supernovas. That was the turn that you're able to easily survive that one. This turn, this is my last turn, though. He's, he's going to kill me for sure. So, again, just to show you that you have to have the right traits in order to completely kill him. The closest I can get is around 200,000 K. That's it. If I, I, I know, though, if I had extra attack or the right traits on some of my medals, I would definitely be able to kill him in time. So, that's the only thing about Xemnas. I know for a fact the strategy is about the same, but at this point... You basically need perfect traits, <laughs> or at least extra attack. If your subs, if your slot multiples are high enough, at least extra attack on your metals in order to deal enough damage. So that's the only downside to it. But other than that, I hope this, uh, I hope this helped you guys out. It was, uh, it was inter, it was interesting <coughs> during my stream and researching about this. Uh, if you want to check out what my streams, I, I stream Unicross quite a bit on Twitch. Link is in the description below. But if you find that video helps, so if you enjoyed and liked the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. Uh, let me, go ahead and let me know what your thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. But my name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace, guys.